I'm gonna keep it real with you. I had a gun in the car, some drill. I'm out on bond for a gun, gang. I can't afford to go back. Got reportedly snitched on by OTF Jam. He allegedly wore. He allegedly wore wire for multiple years. This comes only hours after five people associated with his music business were also accused and taking part in that for hire plot. This case just keeps getting wilder as more details come out. So there's a video circulating around of OTF members getting taken into custody, and what comes after is pretty jaw-dropping. Rumor has it that during the arrests in the supposed circulating tape, Dirk's associates were allegedly pleading for their freedom, and even considering throwing Dirk under the bus to save themselves. I'm keeping real with you. I had a gun in the car some drill. I'm out on bond for a gun, gang. I can't afford to go back. So this case started to heat up really badly when some of the guys involved in this boiling case started talking to the cops. Word on the street is that one of them spilled details to avoid a potential 12-year sentence, which ultimately led to Lil Durk's arrest. As soon as news of Durk's arrest dropped, fans and bloggers went into a frenzy, throwing around theories about who might have actually snitched. The first name to pop up was rapper King Yella, mainly because fans remembered how he'd previously said some things about Durk to the police, even though Yella's been super clear that he'd never snitch. He had released some uh, paperwork talk about how you got, you were getting arrested and they say you named a whole bunch of people. I ain't named shit. the police named them. Then all eyes shifted to Brick Baby. He'd been pretty vocal recently, mentioning how Quando reached out to him, thinking he'd somehow been set up. Like, who died? You can't say that no more. Oh, cause of FBG Cash? Oh, who? Nah, cause Lil Pop. And fans were quick to catch Brick Baby live on No Jumper, where he was reacting to Dirk's arrest with what seemed like a pretty nervous look, only adding more fuel to the fire. Oh yeah, Sloth of Honor. Right? Yeah. They say you can't say that no more. Yeah, play again. Why? <laughs> wait, y'all gotta see this yeah, again? Yeah, yeah, they got you up there. God, this damn. is crazy. But wait, there's more. Apparently, there's a third suspect who could be the actual snitch. Rumor has it that this person is none other than OTF Jam. Yeah, it looks like he's now the prime suspect when it comes to who might have tipped off the cops. And it gets even wilder. There are even reports suggesting that he literally wore wire for years, collecting dirt for the cops. Imagine that twist. Look into OTF Jam. I think we looked into him already. He's the one that ate the cheese. No way. And as if that wasn't enough, police files started leaking online, linking Dirk even more closely to the suspects. Out of the five men allegedly involved in the revenge hit, three of them, Dee Dee, Vani, and Boogie, had their mugshots plastered all over. These guys were reportedly super close to King Von, seen in multiple pictures with him, buying jewelry, just hanging out together. Of course, the fact that they were so tied in with both Vaughn and Dirk is just adding more heat to this already explosive situation. As we all know, this whole intense feud can be traced back to that tragic night when King Vaughn lost his life. Ever since that night, Lil Dirk and OTF have seemed focused on Quando Rondo and his crew, believed by many to be linked to Vaughn's passing due to Quando's ties with NBA Youngboy's circle. At first, Quando actually tried to avoid escalating things, even reaching out to Lil Dirk privately, hoping to squash the tension. But according to reports, Dirk wasn't about to let it slide and took things further by buying up venues where Quando was booked to perform, hitting him hard financially and forcing him to miss out on several big shows. Once Quando realized Dirk wasn't going to back off, he finally fired back with his song Soul Reaper. He dropped some pretty direct lines in that track like, ran up on me, then we spanked him, I'm talking lights out, jumped out with that pipe out, making it clear he wasn't backing down from the confrontation anymore. Ran up on me, then we spanked him, I'm talking lights out, we do the dash and I do turn out with that pipe out. What's interesting is that despite the tension building, Dirk kept it quiet publicly for a long time, but it seems he was making some strategic moves moves behind the scenes. Rumor has it that Dirk might have even been setting up financial incentives for those loyal to Vaughn, possibly rewarding anyone willing to seek revenge. Then, after Quando's close friend Lil Pob was sadly taken out at a gas station, Dirk seemed to allude to the incident in a song, rapping a line like, they like, Dirk, he a singer, he won't smoke sh you can believe whatever you want, I got your folks hit. Fans took this as Dirk indirectly claiming some level of responsibility, or at least sending a message that he wasn't playing around. They like Dirk is a singer, he won't smoke. Sh you can't believe. 
whatever you want, I got your folks here. Quando didn't just let that line slide either. He clapped back hard, mentioning Vaughn and even calling out Vaughn's sister in his track Want Me Dead. In one part, he's got lines like, My favorite op dead sister talk too much. No, I don't like the b Lil Timmy rolled her brother up, got stepped on in some Nike kicks, throwing some pretty direct shots at Vaughn and his family. My favorite op dead sister talk too much. No, I don't like the Dirk wasn't silent for long though. He used a feature on a babyface Ray track to take his own jab back at Quando, taunting him about Lil Pop's passing. He went there by referencing Quando's raw reaction to the news, rapping, You look on the news and see your son screaming no no. It was a heavy line, especially since the whole internet had seen that video clip of Quando, visibly heartbroken, crying and shouting out on the sidewalk after hearing about Pop's tragic death. Now, diving into the timeline that led up to Lil Pop's loss, this was all during that fateful trip to LA on August 18th. Quando Rondo had just landed in LA with his crew, which included his sister and his cousin Lil Pop. Like many rappers, Quando followed the common practice of tapping in with the local scene for safety, especially with the dangers that come with his high-profile name. Being affiliated with a crip set in LA, Quando naturally reached out to the people he trusted in that area. Though we don't know exactly who he connected with, it's typical in the game to link up with your own set when you're in their city, just as a precaution. And given Quando's street ties, this was a usual move to ensure he had some local backup while in LA. But then, things really started going south after that. Not long after Quando tapped in with his contacts, OTF and Lil Durk's people allegedly had all his info on lock. Not just his location, but where he was staying, his whole itinerary, the works. How OTF got hold of all that info so quickly is still a big question mark. Was it just one of those right place, right time coincidences, or did someone intentionally leak Quando's moves? Either way, as soon as Quando's feet hit the ground in LA, OTF apparently knew every single thing he was up to. Once they got wind of Quando's whereabouts, OTF's crew moved into high gear. It was like clockwork. Flights, rental cars, even private jets were booked fast. And this urgency wasn't out of nowhere. Rumor has it there was a bounty on Quando's head, allegedly put up by someone referred to as Co-Conspirator 1, who's supposedly the main one bankrolling the operation. Most people are connecting the dots and speculating that Co-Conspirator 1 is none other than Lil Durk himself, given his influence, resources, and high rank within OTF. All these expenses, supposedly paid for with credit cards tied to OTF, covering flights, hotels, rental cars, you name it. The whole thing seemed way too organized to be random, with multiple people involved in what looked like a full-blown revenge mission. Do you believe that Co-Conspirator 1 seems to be aiming at somebody who's a boss? within the OTF organization that could call sh that could put money money up and also promise music opportunities aiming at someone who would be Dirk or could be um Dirk's brother who passed but the only person living would be Dirk it could be Dirk once OTF's crew touched down in LA they wasted no time they got everything set up, the cars, hotel rooms, ski masks, and firearms. They even kept all communication in code to keep things low-key. Eventually, they gathered close to Quando's hotel, having locked down his schedule to the minute so they knew when and where he'd be heading next. Then came the day of the ambush. Quando was rolling in a black Escalade, and OTF's people were tailing him in a white BMW, following him without him ever noticing. When they finally caught up with him at a gas station, they didn't hesitate. The crew parked nearby hopped out, and started firing shots. The sad part is, Quando was still inside the vehicle, while his cousin Lil Pob was outside when things went down. Pob was the one who got hit, while Quando made it through without a scratch. The plan had backfired in a way because their actual target, Quando, managed to escape unharmed, but his cousin didn't survive the attack. Shots fired, a fight taken to the streets, and this chaotic scene, the ending of a shooting that started in Los Angeles, California. Sheriff's deputies pulling out a man who had been shot in an SUV. Savannah rapper Quando Rondo, a passenger in that car, frantic at the site. After the hit, OTF's crew gathered at a food spot to sort out the finances, talking about how they'd split up the money from this mission, who'd get what, and after settling everything, they didn't waste time getting out of LA. They headed right back to Chicago as soon as things were squared away. Lil Durk, however, had made sure to keep himself out of any direct links to the operation. He reportedly told his crew, listen, even if you're using OTF credit cards, don't book anything under 
my name, my family's name, or anyone who's even remotely connected to me. Dirk's whole strategy was to stay as far from the official paper trail as possible. And the only reason we know he specifically instructed co-conspirator 3, who many think might be working with the feds now, to avoid using his name is that this same person was tasked with booking a private jet for OTF. Dirk made it clear, no names that could lead back to him, keeping himself out of the picture as much as he could. Once the crew got back, payments were handled by another OTF member, likely OTF he was in charge of making sure everyone involved got their cut and stayed quiet so that Dirk wouldn't have to get involved directly. And for a while, it seemed like everything had gone off without a hitch, but then someone started talking, and that's where OTF Jam comes into play. Now here's the backstory on Jam. He was arrested for an attempted back when he was just 17 and served 12 years before finally getting out in March 2022, only a few months before Lul Pob's tragic passing. While it's still unclear exactly what Jam's role was, he was closely tied to OTF and was involved to some extent in what went down. After the hit, everything seemed to be falling into place. Everyone got paid. Fans had no clue what happened, and it seemed like they'd actually pulled it off. But then, just a few months later, in March 2023, Jam got picked up on a gun charge. This new case landed him back in custody, and with the thought of doing another long stretch in prison, Jam decided he wasn't about to go down again. So he started talking to the feds, giving them enough pieces to start pulling together what happened and build a solid RICO case. With Jam now cooperating, the feds had what they needed. They began piecing together who made the calls, who was in the car, who booked the flights, everything they'd been trying to connect for a while. Little Dirt got reportedly snitched on by OTF Jam. He allegedly wore he allegedly wore wire for multiple years. Dirk, though, apparently saw this coming. Rumor has it, he anticipated the feds might try to swoop in and make arrests, even suspecting it might happen at his birthday bash concert in Chicago. But that night, the feds held back, likely to avoid making a scene at such a big event. And a few days later, the arrests started, all tied back to Lil Pob's Now, things are looking pretty tense for Dirk. The feds have more details linking the dots than ever before, and while Dirk managed to keep his name off any official paperwork, the pressure is on. It's going to be interesting to see if Dirk can find a way out of this one, or if this case might be the one that finally catches up with him for good.